Hey everybody, it's John Lake Erie Chestnuts. Pretty exciting times here. It's the very end of September, September 29th. Chestnuts starting to fall. Beautiful fall collars behind us. Got some Tim Hortons coffee in my hand. Love Tim Hortons coffee, especially when the weather gets that crisp fall feeling. If you don't aren't fortunate enough to have that, well, I'm sorry, but it's good coffee, great price. I get mine since I'm trying to drop weight for my elk trip uh, and climbing in the mountains. I'm getting mine with cream and Splenda instead of cream and sugar. But we're here in the orchard and we're going to pick up the burrs that have fallen. We're not going to go with the whole knock down all the burrs and collect all the burrs yet, but within the next week or two that will happen. Uh, but we're going to let them ripen a little bit. It looks like we did that October 5th through 9th or so last year. So we'll probably follow that schedule similarly this year. I wanted to address a few questions that I get every year. I have a buzzard flying near me. That's not a good sign. <laughs> Is You see these trees here that have their yellow. Uh, I get questions about trees, believe it or not, and the yellowing of them. Uh, chestnuts turn yellow pretty early, uh, and and that's the color they turn as they go into their fall color. So yellowing trees this time of year, not concerning. There's no mineral deficiency. They're getting ready for, for winter. Uh, but we're going to do a little bit of work here on the farm today. We're going to collect some chestnuts. That's order number one. Priority number two, we're going to plant some trees. We got several exciting trees I'm going to plant. And then number uh, three, uh, I think I'm in the right order here. Going to work on just a little bit of blind maintenance as I get ready as we go into deer season here. So follow along as we work a little bit here at Lake Erie Chestnuts. So just a little bit of housekeeping. I the People asked me about the gloves last time. And these are, believe it or not, 10 for $5. Just rubber coated gloves. They let you play with the nuts, but you cannot squeeze grip tightly on the burr. So you can lightly pick up the burr and move them without fear of being poked. So I like these, they're cheap. The other thing was, uh, somebody commented on one of the videos, what happens if you just leave the chestnuts? Well, they can get carried off, they can get eaten. Uh, squirrels can bury them. Uh, but the main reason for cleaning up chestnuts every two or three days as they start falling is to interrupt the life cycle of the chestnut weevil. The weevil, uh, the, the, the fly or an insect goes up and as the burr uh, is maturing has a long nose that goes past the burr spikes and injects its eggs into the burr and when the burr falls down to the ground that's like knocking on the door signals those worms which are in the chestnuts to start eating and then exit the nut and go into the dirt where they live I can't remember a year or two and then the next when they mature into the adult insect they emerge from the soil go up into the tree and the cycle repeats so if you can pull, pick up the nuts every two or three days you can interrupt that life cycle and really limit weevils in your chestnuts and people do not like wormy chestnuts to eat it's high in protein but not very popular I want to make an important correction, and I've said this wrong in about 10 videos, and I'm really sorry. The tree that you see back there that's producing right now, I have said is Ching, Q-I-N-G, multiple times. I got off on my rose. That is a seedling of a peri, P-E-R-R-Y. It's a seedling of it. It is not a, a named cultivar. It's a seedling. This right here is a Ching. I was one row off, so... This, Still a very large tree, doing very well. The whole row of them doing very nicely. This whole row, you know, from that tree, this tree going all the way down that you can see until it goes over the hill and then it turns into a different variety. But those are all Ching. But this variety here is Perry, uh, has Perry parentage. So I sincerely apologize to any of you. I think you'll still do great in this area with Ching. I've grown a bunch of Ching, uh, but Perry is the tree that is getting all this uh, production early in the season. I apologize for that. So all sorts of 
burrs on the ground. So I'll, I'm going to just kind of pitch these into one location. Then we'll work on opening them up. Now this is where I picked up those few last time. And then I'll look and see if any nuts have actually hit the ground and escaped being eaten. So you can see with these rubber gloves, I can pick them. I just am not squeezing tightly. And I see a lot of these have two nuts fertilized, so that's better than one. Some have three. I love that. Let's look at these. Can you see them? Three nuts in there. Beautiful. nuts out. We'll deal with the burrs. We'll burn them later. And I don't have weevils as far as I know in this orchard, but they got to be coming because they live in the area and eventually they somehow find their ways here. Beautiful, beautiful chestnuts. Now, as this gets to be more productive, we're definitely going to adjust our, our methods so that we can be more efficient. Now we'll skip forward here. One thing I usually do, there's always a few burrs ready to drop. So I usually just give the tree a little shake. That way, any tree that, any burr that's gonna fall off in the next few days, kind of gonna be ready to go. I don't do it too vigorously, but you see, I dropped another 40 burrs here. I had them all gathered up, and all of these over here are the new fallen ones. And you can see. They're ready. They're getting ready to fall. They've already cracked open. I don't know if you can see that well, but the nuts are already brown inside. So it's not making the... Sorry, I'm crooked, but it's not making the raw, you know, something that's not ready to fall. They're ready to fall. Yeah, so we have a nice little pile of chestnuts. Still several burrs on the tree. So, do deer like chestnuts? Well, there's a deer track, deer track, deer track, deer track. And right underneath this tree, a scrape where deer mark their territory. So yes, I think they like it. <laughs> 
and I just realized this. This is not good. Looky here. Rubbing up my tree. Hopefully the tree does okay with this. Remember I was gonna cut that branch down. This is my favorite tree. Oh boy. So some of you question why I would take the tree out of the tube. Well, first of all, it's too tight. Uh, second of all, the reason why I took it out of the tube is it's time for it to start growing up. And just like my trucks, if I can't drive them off road and get them dirty or get a scratch on the side, I don't want it. This tree is gonna to have to survive the elements. I'm not gonna put a fence around this entire orchard, at least at this point. Uh, this tree is gonna to have to learn to survive. Uh, now, I could put a wire cage around it. That is pretty effective. Deer don't like putting their antlers on a wire near as much as they don't mind plastic or just straight wood, but uh, I was gonna trim this branch this fall, but you see this, it's pretty good protection. So I'm gonna leave this tree alone. We'll see, it'll have to be a survivor if it's gonna make it in my orchard. Okay, so I'm gonna walk every tree here. I'm gonna give every tree a shake because I can't always see all the burrs. And we're gonna pick up any burrs that have fallen. We're gonna visit all 450 trees. Only maybe 200 are producing. All right, here we go. Take that one, not much coming. Look at the ground. Nothing. Some nice burrs up there. Nothing falling yet. None falling yet, but nice burrs. No burrs falling yet. All the dead trees in the background, those are ash trees. Emerald ash borer has wiped them out in the past couple years. Any of those dead trees you see up in the tops, those are all ash. Well, let's get to hardcore peeling these, these burrs. front pile here we've been peeling with our hands. I'm going to try stomping on them, see if that makes any difference and quick, just kind of rolling them with my feet. Definitely going to have to work on my, my speed as the, I'll get some equipment here as time goes on. I think it sped me up a little bit, kind of opened the shell a little easier. The back sore. Yeah, I got a pretty good bag. Chestnuts, several pounds here. Maybe five pounds. Got another uh, 25, 30 burrs on the tree. Uh, so we're gonna wrap this up. This is the main tree dropping. Only had one other tree dropping. But in the next week, all that's gonna change. So stay with us. I'm gonna leave these burrs here for now. At the end of the season, I'll wrap them all up and I'll go burn them. They don't hurt anything, but we're going to burn them. I collected up all of the unfertilized nuts. They're shriveled and small. I don't think a weevils can live in that, but I figure I'll take those off the orchard floor anyway, just to eliminate any possibility. And then the easy way to get them off is you put them in a sink with water and they'll just all float and you just skim them off and throw those away or burn them or whatever. Well guys, we're gonna wrap up this first part of the video. Uh, too long to kind of make it into one video, but we got the chestnuts picked up. We'll do some burr opening. Uh, we've got all those burrs open. We got a couple more opening. Really just one tree dropping. We have a second one that dropped a couple burrs, but otherwise all the rest still waiting to go. Uh, but anyway, thanks for following me here at Lake Erie Chestnuts. We appreciate you following. We really do enjoy interacting with you. If you have any comments or questions, we're happy to answer them click that like button. We don't ask you to do that a lot, but if you haven't subscribed, you're interested in chestnuts, other types of trees, hunting, 
general outdoors type of stuff, uh, you know, consider subscribing. I really appreciate that. So thanks for following us here at Lake Erie Chestnuts. Remember, if you're not growing, you're dying.